Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to simulate a video glitch effect and quickly apply it to other photos. This is an update of a tutorial I did quite a while ago on an earlier version of Photoshop. Before we begin, you can get the most current version of Photoshop and Lightroom and 20 gigabytes of cloud storage all together for only $7.99 per month. Click the link in my video's description to get the discount. Open an image you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. Go to Image and Image Size. To get similar results that I'll be getting from the filters and effects, make its resolution 150 pixels per inch. To fit it back onto your canvas, Press Ctrl-0 on Windows or Command-0 on a Mac. Next, we'll remove the background by making a selection around your subject. For this example, I'll use the Quick Selection tool. If you're using this tool as well, make its size 10 pixels. Drag your tool inside your subject until all of it is selected. To remove areas, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag over those areas. Click the Refine Edge button, or go to Select and Refine Edge. Check Smart Radius, and drag the radius to the right approximately this much. Check Decontaminate Colors, and drag the amount to approximately 80%. Output it as a new layer, and click OK. Shift click on the bottom layer to make it active as well, and click the icon at the upper right of the layers panel. Click Convert to Smart Object. Smart objects allow us to modify images non destructively, as well as edit all the effects that we'll be adding to them at any time. Plus, we can replace our image with another image and still retain all the effects. Keep in mind, since every photo has its own characteristics, the settings for the effects that I'll be using in my image may have a different result on yours, so feel free to play with the setting amounts. Open the flyout list again, and this time click Duplicate Layer. Click New, and name it Displacement. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. This duplicate layer will be our displacement map, which we'll use to wrap textures around the contours of our subject. Displacement maps work best when they're black and white and slightly blurred. To blur it, go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 3 to 5 pixels, and click OK. To make it black and white, click the Adjustment Layer icon, and click Black White. Go to File and Save As. Save it to your desktop as a PSD file, then click Save. If you see this window, click OK. We can now close the displacement file since we saved it to our desktop. We're going to make six copies of the layer. Press Ctrl or Command J six times. Name the top layer Horizontal Waves, the layer under it Displace, the next one Overlay, then Hard Light, 102%, Vertical Bands, and the bottom layer, Large Background. We want to see just this bottom layer and hide all the layers above it. To do this, Alt-Click or Option-Click on the eyeball icon next to the Large Background. Open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command-T. Click the chain link between the width and the height. This links them together. 
In either field, type in 300, then press Enter or Return twice. To move your image, press V to open your Move tool and drag it to a new position. You can always reposition it later if you want. We want your background color black. If it isn't, click this icon and then press X to invert them. Click the foreground color and in the color picker's hexadecimal field, type in 00D1F7. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. If your image is too large to see in the window and you want to see it entirely, you can zoom out of the preview window. Open the Artistic Folder and click Neon Glow. I'll make the size 5 and the brightness 15, however, feel free to experiment with their amounts. Double click the glow color. I'm using the default color, which is four zeros, FF, however, pick whatever color you'd like. Then click OK or press Enter or Return to accept the color and click OK to accept the neon glow. Go to Filter, Distort, and Wave. I'll make the number of generators 1, the wavelength 9 and 10, the amplitude 1 and 206, and the scale 100% and 1%. The type is Sine and Repeat Edge Pixels. Remember, you can always edit these settings at any time because all our layers are smart objects, so we're applying smart filters to them. Scroll to the top of the Layers panel and make the Displace layer visible and active. Change its Blend Mode to Hard Light. Go to Filter Distort and Wave. We'll use the same settings that we used earlier for the background. Go back to Filter, Distort and Displace. Make the horizontal and vertical scales between 10 to 20, stretch to fit, and repeat edge pixels. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Open your desktop, click the displacement file that you saved earlier, and click Open. To save space in the Layers panel, click the small arrowhead icon to collapse the effects. To see them again, just click back on the arrowhead. Make your hard light layer visible and active. Change its blend mode to hard light. Make the 102% layer visible and active. Control click or command click on the thumbnail of the displace layer to make a selection of its shape. Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to the active layer. Invert the layer mask by pressing control or command I. Click off the chain link to unlink the layer and the layer mask. Now we can reposition and resize either of them independently of the other. Make the layer active and open your transform tool. Click the chain link icon and in either the width or the height, type in 102. Then to accept it, press enter or return twice. Next, we'll blend in the edges of our subject with the background. First, change its blend mode to hard light. Click the adjustment layer icon and click invert. To restrict the invert effect to just the one layer below it, we need to make it into a clipping mask. To do this, press Ctrl Alt G on Windows or Command Option G on a Mac. 
make the overlay layer visible and active. Change its blend mode to overlay. Go to Filter, Distort, and Wave. The number of generators is 1. The wavelength is 300 and 999. The amplitude is 36 and 514. And the scale is 1% and 100%. The type is square and repeat edge pixels. Then click OK. Drag the layer to a position you like. You can always reposition it later if you want. Next, we'll add a layer of color distortion. Let's collapse the smart filter to save space. Scroll to the top and make the top layer visible and active. Change its blend mode to hard light and go to Filter, Distort, and Wave. Make the number of generators 171, the wavelength 9 and 10, the amplitude 1 and 206, and the scale 100% and 1%. The type is Sine, and repeat edge pixels. Then click OK. Next, we'll make our subject's color blend into our overall image. First, let's collapse the smart filter to save space. Make the displace layer active and click the adjustment layer icon. Click Hue Saturation. We'll make it into a clipping mask so it'll restrict itself to affect just the displace layer below it. As before, to clip it, press Ctrl-Alt-G on Windows or Command-Option-G on a Mac, or you can clip the clipping mask icon. Check Colorize. Make the hue 189 and the saturation 0. Scroll to the bottom of the Layers panel and make the Vertical Bands layer visible and active. Change its blend mode to luminosity. Go to Filter, Distort, and Wave. Make the number of generators 294, the wavelength 1 and 529, the amplitude 228 and 352, and the scale 1% and 100%. The type is Sign and Repeat Edge Pixels. Go to Filter, Distort, and Displace. Displace it by 10 to 20 pixels. Click the displacement file that you saved earlier and click Open. Now your vertical bands layer is wrapping around the contours of your subject. Next, we'll make the vertical bands blend into your subject while retaining its original characteristics over the background. First, collapse the smart filters. Go to the layer mask and press and hold Alt or Option as you drag a copy of the layer mask onto your vertical bands layer. Presently, the layer mask is hiding the vertical bands inside your subject. Press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of the layer and its layer mask. Make the layer mask copy active and invert it by pressing Ctrl or Command I. Now we can see the vertical bands inside your subject again. In order for it to blend into your subject, make the vertical bands copy active and change its blend mode to saturation. If you want to replace your subject with a different one, Double click on any smart object to open its source image. Open a new subject and as you did earlier, remove the background. Drag it onto the source tab of the smart object and without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down onto your image 
and release. To resize it, open your transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Go to a corner, and when you see a diagonal double arrow, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it out or in. Drag it to position it, and press Enter or Return. Click off the eyeball icon next to the original subject to hide it, and close the tab of your new smart object. When you see this window, click Yes to save the changes. Open back the tab of your glitch document, and you'll see that all the layers except the layer masks have been replaced with your new subject. To replace the layer masks, scroll to your Displace layer and Control click or Command click on its thumbnail to make a selection of its shape. Scroll down to see the layer masks and drag the top one to the trash. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to the active layer. Replace the other layer masks and feel free to experiment by inverting them to get different results as well as experimenting with all the blend modes and wave filters. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.